meeting of the guests and city council will now come to order. The chair, call, the chair calls on city clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilman Harris. Here. Williams. Here. Avery. Here. Uh, Councilman Eccles is absent today, and our meeting is being chaired by our President Pro Tem, Councilman Cannon. Councilman Stewart. Here. Cannon. Here. Reed. Here. We do have a quorum present today, and the meeting is open for business. I'm going to ask Jeremy Ward to lead the invocation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Father, we, we thank you for the blessings of life and all that you do for us. We praise you that we have the ability to gather and discuss and to, to just uh, better our, our city. Lord, I pray for our leadership this morning that you give them wisdom wisdom to make right decisions and Lord we ask that all this would glorify you for it's in thy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the work session and council meeting held on August the 7th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to approve minutes. The chair will entertain a motion to ratify payments of the count <coughs> for the week of August the 3rd through the 9th. So, so moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Proclamations, Mayor Guyton. Unfinished business. A is a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property at 425 Broad Street in District 3, owned by Sarah Moss. This resolution was tabled for 30 days on July the 10th. What is the pleasure of the council? Mr. President, uh, based on the recommendation of the building department, we're going to ask for an additional 30-day table. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote, please? Those in favor to table the resolution for an additional 30 days, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to table for 30 days. Mr. President, we probably need to talk about that a little more uh, because we were pretty firm about <laughs> taking some action in the last school around, so we probably need to talk about that. Okay, we'll have some discussion then. Go ahead if you want to discuss it. Yeah. Start on the discussion. Well, you know, I, I think the big thing to note here is that, uh, and, and if Brian is here, is he not? No. He's not here. He's not here. Yeah. I, I think the big thing to note is that there have been some uh, some recent developments as it relates to that property that uh, necessitate that uh, that we do table and do our due diligence as it relates to that. So uh, I don't I don't want the uh, there to be the uh, indication that this tabling means no activity. There's some, uh, I think, and I think this council believes that there's some significant activity uh, that, uh, that again, constitutes some additional review. Anyone else? That's correct. No. That's okay. <laughs> that brings us down to B, and there's a new owner of the property located at 437 Broad Street, and no council action will be will be necessary at this time to be taken and that goes back to 425 that's what he just said there's been a lot of development yeah okay so that goes back to you okay and resolution C is ordering abatement of nuisance on property at 211 Roof Street mm -hmm. in District 4 owned by Monica Mack this resolution was tabled for 30 days on July the 10th what is the pleasure of the council I didn't reach him you didn't reach it? Uh, I make a motion. We obey. Second. Okay. Uh, this is in Mr. Eccles' district, and he's not with us today. That was the reason for the hesitation. It is in uh, Eccles' district, but uh, he has a problem with it. He can bring it up next week and, and we re rehash it if he needs to, but uh, I think it's going to be a, a bait. Okay. Clerk, will you take the vote, please? Those in favor to table, I'm sorry, those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstain. We have one abstention. Motion carries to adopt. Number nine. This is the time and place is advertised to conduct a public hearing allowing anyone to speak in opposition to 
are in favor of a resolution approving issuance of alcoholic beverage license at Boomer's All American Barber Spa Incorporated. They have applied for <coughs> own or off premise retail beer and table wine license at 541 Broad Street in District 3. Is there anyone here who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Does any here, anyone here wish to speak in favor? The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? I, uh, when I first read this today, I actually went in this building this past week. I think it was last Friday I went in it and just looked around and I talked to the gym. I don't know if he was the owner. There was another lady there and I talked to a couple people there. Looks like it's going to be a real nice place when they finish it. I think his target date he told me to open up was going to be August 31st. I just want to uh, ask, did, did you get a haircut there? <laughs> no, I didn't get a haircut, but I did ask him about cutting my hair when I was there. <laughs> we got I a lot of information. mostly interested in the massage. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of information on that uh, last week. You know, haircuts, uh, massages, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. My wife's still thinking about it. Me. Oh, about sending you? Yeah. All right. Yeah. How about, did you ask John? <laughs> I didn't tell him. <laughs> I did. You're uh, fixing to by a boat. <laughs> I actually did speak with a lady that was going to do the massages. I think she said she was going to. She was come out door when I was going in. I think we've beat this one to death, too. Clerk, will I, you I, take? I think so. <laughs> Clerk, will you take the vote? <laughs> Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Number 10, new business. Is there any new business today? Mr. President, I have a resolution I'd like to ask for unanimous consent to consider this morning. It's a resolution appointing Dennis Tarkington to replace Scott Swan as a member of the Harrelson Avenue Architectural Review Board. So I'd like to ask for unanimous consent to consider. Plus, I want to amend that to extend uh, Mary Dale uh, term in, on the Architectural Review Board and uh, also uh, Carol Davis for another term. So. Second. Second. We got a motion and a second. Uh, Ms. Legal Assistant, did you get those names on there for us? Yes. Okay. Clerk, will you take the vote, please? Okay, why don't we first ask for unanimous consent oh, okay. to consider the yeah, resolution today. Uh, those in favor, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed, consent has been granted <clears throat> for today. Uh, Councilman Stewart also made a motion to amend the ordinance to add the other two names. Second. To, to extend their uh, term, they're already serving on the board, but they, they will they, for another term, really, is what I mean. It would be for reappointment of those mm -hmm. two members. Right. Those in favor of the amendment, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Resolution stands amended. Thank you. Move to adopt. Move to adopt. Okay. You've got to move to adopt. Move to adopt. You want to move to yeah, adopt? Yeah, make a motion. Make a motion. <laughs> make a motion. We, we approve. Second. Second. Is there any more discussion? <laughs> If there's not, clerk, will you please take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution as amended, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. Is there any other new business? Mr. President, I have a resolution 300 I'd like to ask for unanimous consent to consider. It's authorizing memorandum of understanding between the city of Gaston and Etowah County Drug Enforcement Unit, DEU. Put that in the form of unanimous. Second. Clark, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution today, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent has been granted. Okay, move to adopt. Second. Second. <clears throat> is there any discussion? Yeah, I might note that this has already been budgeted to $120,000. No. Was it budgeted? That's right. I just been saying, yeah, yeah, it wasn't budgeted because I, cause I was the purpose of. Yeah, I'm good ready to talk about that. I want to hear it. Yeah, I know you want to hear it. <laughs> Just don't bring that Democrat and Republican thing up. Well, then you better stop your ears up. There you go. I knew it was going to turn political. You know, I mean, seriously, we, 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 we didn't budget this amount. And the reason we didn't budget this amount is because they've been getting funds uh, from the state through a federal grant. 
and, and I, I'm going to remind folk every chance I get because it's important <coughs> to know who you're voting for and what those folks stand for when you vote for them. You got all those folks who went to Washington and said they weren't going to raise the taxes. They were going to cut the cost of government. Well, they're cutting services to cities and, and states when they do that. Same thing about the folks you sent to Montgomery. Well, we ain't going to raise. There's no new taxes. No. But they're cutting the services. And then it jumps down to the city. And people want to know why we're having the problems with municipalities and communities across this country. Why are they going bankrupt? It's very simple. Folks in Washington, the folks in their state capital are not raising taxes. And then it puts the burden upon the local municipalities to either raise taxes or, or cut the services. Because <coughs> that's basically that trickle-down theory that they've been talking about. And that's what's happening here. People want to know why we're doing what we're doing to our retirees. This is the reason, because all these other services are going up, and the folks in Montgomery and the folks in Washington is passing the buck to us. And, and we're the ones who are getting the blame and getting all the heat when we have to come down and make these hard decisions. And every chance I get, I'm going to remind folks as to why we're making this hard decision. It's because the folks we sent to Washington, and it's the folks we sent to Montgomery. If they just happen to be Republicans, that's just tough. But that's who's doing it. And so if the shoe fit, they need to wear it. But if you got a problem with these issues, you need to call your a local legislative delegation, or you need to call your congressman and let them know how you feel about all these services that are being affected by their no new tax stand. I'm off my soapbox. All right. I still <coughs> think it comes all the way to the top. I think we spent a whole pile of money, and now they turn around and we don't have any for the bottom. So that's going to work out, I'm sure, in November. It sure will. It will. It'll well, come back. I still move to adopt. Second. Okay, since we're finished with, we're finished with discussion yeah, we're now. With discussion, yeah. We're ready to take the vote. Clerk, will you take the vote, please? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, <coughs> motion carries to adopt. Is there any other new business? Yes, Mr. President, I have a, I have a, a resolution that I would like to ask for unanimous consent to consider today. It's a authorizing agreement with Gadsden State Community College to allow Gadsden State Community College uh, emergency medical services students to ride with gas and fire department. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution today, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent has been granted. Move to adopt. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Nope. This, this is an ongoing contract, I think, right? I don't know how many years it's been going on, but I think it's an ongoing contract. These uh, students or people that's, that's taking this course, they have to have so many hours riding, you know, and with EMA and training, EMA and training <laughs> in hospitals and stuff. And I think we have did this for a long time. Clinical training. And also, too, they have to sign a waiver of release where we're not hold us liable for anything that happens to them also. Right. If there's no further discussion, clerk, will you take the vote on this, please? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. That brings us down to department reports, committee boards, et cetera. I think John Ashley is going to speak about grass with us first. And then Mr. Stovall from Public Works will speak next. Uh, I think Mr. Stovall is back there. He's in there. He hides. You might want to cut your mic on, please. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. How's that? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm John Ashley, Community Development over the nuisance grass cutting lots, uh, state and individual. Um, we've had uh, a number of questions come up. Just want to try to address a few of them today. Um, on the grass cutting, currently, let me give you the current status. We're cutting off Tuscaloosa Avenue right now. We just recently left the East Gadsden area. Um, and once we get through off Tuscaloosa Avenue area, we're going to move to Oak Park and Walnut Park areas. Um, that's the current status on what we're trying to do. Um, several reasons right now that we're 
I'm not going to say behind, but have had a lot of grass growing. Uh, number one, obviously, is the rain. Uh, we did have a drought that affected us back in the end of June. Um, also, at the start of this year, we, we started cutting grass about a month early, too. Uh, we actually had to start in, in March. Generally, we start about the mid, middle, middle of April. Uh, but March, the grass started growing, so we had to jump on it a little bit quicker this year. Um, we, we had a budget of $85,000. I've got a breakdown, and I brought everybody a copy, uh, something for y'all to carry home and mull over. I'm going to give these to Ivan and let her pass them out. What y'all are receiving is a, a document that we put together that shows um, the properties that we've cut in each individual district, how much money we've spent in each individual district, the number of cuts in each district, the date, the amount, and the owner. Uh, this includes uh, state properties, individual properties, um, and I've got those numbers in front of me. Up, in, uh, up until uh, June the 30th, from October 1st till June the 30th, our budget was 85000 and we had spent $78,638. Uh, and there's an individual breakdown, like I said earlier, on, on the number of lots um, in each district and the amount spent in each district. Um, one thing that I want to bring up, too, also is the, the uh, increase over the last few years. I went back and put together some numbers along with uh, other people in community development, and we have come up with... Uh, uh, some statistics to show you that over the last few years we've increased with state properties. Uh, in 2010, we cut 497 uh, individual and state lots. In 2011, that number rose to 524, which was a 5% increase. In 2012, which we're not to the end of the year yet, we're already at 582, which is an 11% increase. Um, these increases are due to the fact that uh, people have had properties foreclosed on or they've just left them and abandoned them. Um, we also added this year, uh, in response to over the last few years, the, the ongoing uh, inclusion of all these additional properties. Um, and we, and this was discussed that we would go ahead and add another tractor crew. We did that this year to cut down on the number of complaints and to try to address them a lot quicker. Over the last few years, we've been getting complaints that we weren't cutting property quick enough, fast enough, whatever the case may be. So we added this tractor crew, and up and through uh, up until June the 30th, uh, we had everything in pretty good shape. Uh, and then we kind of hit a little drought right there. And when we hit that drought, uh, we kind of slowed down the process. But then all of a sudden, the rains came back, and everything started growing all at once again. Uh, so it's basically like starting the year over again. And at the start of the year, everything's grown in every district, and it all wants to be cut right then. But uh, generally, at the start of the year, when we cut, we uh, kind of get it on a rotating basis, and uh, we'll be able, we're able to uh, kind of get it under control. But like I said, during the middle of summer, it's like we started all over again. Um, don't really have a whole lot more to add. We, uh, we did get to the point where we were about uh, near the end of our budget. Uh, and that's about when that drought hit, so that did help us to a degree. We were able to add a little bit of money to the uh, uh, budget that we had to try to get us through to the end of uh, September and right now we're basically just trying to mow uh, lots that are actually called in by citizens and the main thoroughfares uh, roads of that nature that are they're highly traveled um, and that's what we're focusing on right now it, it has uh, we have had a slowdown on what I call uh, lots that we go out and, and initiate on our own and we're starting to get calls on a lot of the uh, properties that we initiate on our own, where in the past we've always been able to initiate those and not have calls on them. But now, since we've kind of slowed down cutting those, we are getting calls on those as well. So um, it's an uphill battle, but uh, I feel like we'll be in good shape here, hopefully uh, 
till we get to October, and then we'll start the process all over again and uh, try to control it as well as we can. So if y'all have any questions or anything I can address, I'll be glad to answer anything right now at this time. John, hey John, if you if if you have someone to to, to challenge you on the the equity of the number of cuts per district, I mean, how, how do you respond? I know I'm sure there's a there, there's a reason. Can you respond to that? Yeah, we we have a uh, uh, system where we keep up with the number. Uh, we have work orders that we give to the city contractor, and he fills those. I sign the work orders to the city contractor, and then he signs them after they're cut uh, and provides a photograph and turns them back into us. And we have an individual file on each piece of property that we cut and maintain. We keep all that information in that file, and if somebody challenges the number of cuts or if we've cut it, then we have not only the record uh, signed by myself and the city contractor and the mining charge, but we also have a photograph, too, to show that it was in violation when we cut it. So. Uh, we have a pretty good system in place to show anybody that challenges us whether or not we cut their property or not. Uh, we can usually address that with no problems. Uh, that photographs, like the old saying, worth a thousand, thousand words. So, John, I don't, I don't know about everybody else, but it appears to me, and I know Robert's going to say something about this later. Uh, it looks to me like a sixty or sixty-five percent of mine are the state of Alabama. <laughs> I'm loaded. I got 74 well, lots, and the state of Alabama is dominant on these things. Now, we, we've been talking about that, and uh, he's fair committee and, and Montgomery, and I'm CED, and I'm definitely going to be bringing this up again. It's already on the agenda, right, yeah, Robert? It's on the agenda. And we got to push to do something about this. It, if, you will, if you will look at the last sheet on your paperwork, yeah. the 2012, I did break it down. Uh, out of the 582 that we have cut, mm -hmm. 293 of them are state, 289 are individual. This is the first time that state has ever passed individual. And this is a trend that's going to continue. Um, I don't want to get up here and, and make it sound all rosy, but there's just more state property coming our way. And um, like I said earlier, it's due to foreclosures and people just moving off and they just let this property roll back to the state. And it's just something that uh, uh, is going to continue to to probably grow and escalate over the years. He's uh, going to elaborate, but I, I want to make it clear that last week I thought I did make it clear this is not even including what Public Works is cut. That's not correct. Not including what Parks and Rec is cut. That's so correct. To understand the, the immensity of this thing is unbelievable. That's when correct. When it all comes up and has to be cut at one time. That's so correct. I hope everybody looked at last week and understands what I said about that and also looks at this state thing and hopefully Robert will. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to comment, yeah. Whatever John, you get through, or whatever. I'm, John, I, I wish you would take a look at these papers you gave us again right here. You gave all of us a paper. I just glanced through mine and it said we spent $14,955 in District 6 cutting grass. Mm -hmm. uh, I just glanced through the paper real quick that you just gave us, and there's a bunch of streets on there and places that have been cut that actually is in, not in District 6 on this sheet you just gave me so we, that means that my total in district six couldn't be right because you know there's a bunch of uh, streets on there that w that's not in my district that y'all cut well we went through it pretty thorough and we went by one of the maps that was supplied to us through uh, uh through the city itself so that's where i pulled my information from because the district on, information on herring street on this don't really matter but on herring street over in east guest and by the funeral home district six don't go that way <laughs> well that shouldn't be on district six it was on here then there was there's just a few things that i think we need to just look at on this and that problem. that may be at the end of the list where i included all the city properties that were cutting okay and there was some on tuscaloosa here that's that's in district seven or what in district six i noticed but yeah i'm just going to bring you up to that to that well, billy gave me a couple on springfield yeah, I'm yeah, basically taking. Yeah, we'll give or take, give or take What's a two? couple of hundred dollars. Well, they're both you know, state you know, of Alabama. We, this is not an exact yeah. science here. You know, we're dealing with the state of Alabama you know. also. Yeah, everyone yeah. of them just about state of Alabama. Yeah. So I'm you, just going to bring that to your attention. Okay. So, okay. so I can I can say then that you gave me a misfigure too, because mine is twenty thousand dollars. It's more than anybody. So can I say half of those streets don't belong now? I mean, I'm just looking through. Bottom, the, bottom line is. Yeah. Bottom line is. Yeah. Yeah. They all belong to the city they of Gadsden, right. and we've got to cut them. And, and it's an ordinance that was handed down by the council, and, and you know we want to we want to try to uh, 
help the citizens. We want to try to cut them. I don't care whose district they're in. I don't. I don't show any favoritism. I don't care what district I'm mowing in. I want to mow in all districts. I wish I had enough people to put one in each district. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we don't. Um, uh, and we we thing. we put this information together fairly quick, as it was kind of. Yeah. thrown on me here pretty quick but I, I think the key thing that we need to be aware of and the public need to be aware of and I don't know what we can do again like Ben said we're working on this as I go through this list I, I would almost venture to say two-thirds of what I see here probably got the state of Alabama listed well and, like, and, I, like I said earlier it's, it's this year 582 cases 293 are state 289 so it's a tad over 50 percent leaning right. toward the state now well, and, and several years ago, that number was down around 35 percent. So, but, but what the public needs to be aware of, and what, what I would hope that they would do, is to find out if the lot next to them belongs to the state of Alabama. If so, and if we've got an interest in it for cutting the grass, we got a fire sale. We're going to let it go cheap, and we would hope that those folks would purchase those lots, and then they in turn can keep them up, and they improve their community by having more property too um, I, I think that's going to be the only answer at this point in time and hopefully we are working to get uh, the legislature those guys down there who said they ain't going to raise your taxes I'm going to, have to put that in hopefully we can get them to pass a bill to make it easier for the city to obtain um, a title to the property and that's what we're working on if we can do that then we can pass that savings on to the citizens who own those properties next door and hopefully they'll start cutting the grass and we can get out of the grass cutting business that's the only way we're going to be able to solve this problem otherwise it's going to get larger and it's going to get bigger and bigger so and there and there is a procedure and I think I go over this about every year but there's a procedure that you can purchase the property from the state if you're an individual and you have property next door to you and I'll be more than happy to walk you through the process there uh, my phone number you can call me 256-549-4532 uh, if you have a vacant lot next to you I can look up ownership on it I can provide all that information to you and I can walk you through a process if it's a state property yeah. um, I can tell you how to go about acquiring it I can tell you how to uh, satisfy any liens or anything that the city has on the property I know that we're more than willing uh, to work with any any individual party on liens and bills that we may have we've offered to just about do away with a bill in some cases but uh, uh, it, it is a very good point that if you have vacant lot next to you do a little bit of inquiry and find out and um, you know it's only going to help you in the long run it's going to keep your neighborhood looking better and it, it's it's going to add property possibly to to yours and, and increase that value as well and you may can get it for little or nothing so I'm all for that John, would you please uh, give give your phone number again, uh, so 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 that all of our citizens will understand this this procedure. They need to call you if they are go through that whole spiel again about state property and city property and liens, so that you can talk people through the process of them obtaining a title to property next to them. Okay, there there is a process where you go through the state um, and you can file an application to get what's called a tax title on a piece of property if it's technically owned by the state of Alabama. Um, there is a process. It starts out um, uh, with some paperwork that you send to Montgomery. Uh, they send you back information and tell you what the back taxes are on it and there's usually a little penalty involved. You pay that, you will receive a tax title on it. There's a three-year right of redemption on that. Uh, the previous owner has three years to come back and, and, and um, reclaim that property. But the key fact is if they do reclaim it, they have to reimburse you any monies that you've spent for taxes, upkeep, maintenance, whatever. Uh, but it's, it's a process. It just takes a little legwork. Again, I've walked quite a few people through it uh, with no problems, no difficulties, uh, just a little bit of time and effort. Uh, but my phone number again, 256-549-4532, uh, and I'll be glad to help anybody uh, go through the process to try to obtain any state property if it's beside them or around them. Or, uh, there's also some lots out there that could be looked at that are big enough for a lot of the uh, 
contractors. Uh, I, I welcome contractors to call me and ask me, and if I can provide a lot that's big enough and suitable to build a house on or something of that nature, uh, that's something, too, that could be looked at from their aspects as well. So, John, John, I do want to tell you that uh, every time I turn in something about some grass being cut and nuisance and abatement, that those contractors you have are really good, hardworking guys that come out there. When they get that lot cut, it's perfect. You ain't got to worry about nothing, no debris or nothing left there to haul everything off, and they really, really, really do a good job. I just want to say I appreciate you and them for the work y'all put I, into that. I appreciate the comments, and I know our city contractor does, and um, they do a, a very diligent job. Um, a lot of people think of grass cutting as getting out there on your old Murray riding lawnmower, but these guys have to get out there with a tractor and a bush hog and go in grass sometimes and abandon houses, and I, they've told me stories about of course, the snakes and sometimes these abandoned houses, you have people coming out of them and you don't know what they're going to do. So it's 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 a job that, that uh, they do outstanding on it. And uh, I want to give them all the credit in the world because they, they go out and, and um, never know what they're going to face from one lot to the next. But uh, they try to do as good a job as they can and, and try to, again, improve the neighborhood for the citizens and, and community at large. Hey, John, if you'll get with Brian Cox, you know Brian with 99, if you'll get with him and give him these, this information about who to call, what to do, and, and all that, as well as even if there's any question, if it's one that we own, uh, we're, we're having uh, talk with the attorney here, Miss Lloyd, and we're going to start checking the titles on those that we think we own, if they're free and clear, whatever, where we can start selling to the people on either side or contractors but if you get with brian he'll get all that on 99 he'll fix it up for you and that sounds come good. up a lot okay i'm all for getting rid of it. all right Thank any you, more sir. questions now that's Stovall. all we got mr Stovall from the gas and public works department is going to come and speak with us about grass and other subjects and other subjects mr harris says I'm Brian Stovall, City of Gadsden Public Works Director. Um, had some questions still, you know, on who's to cut what. Uh, I've got the city ordinance here, section 85, 86-5, weeds and tall grass, section A, B, and C. Just to uh, summarize a little bit, it says, uh, rights of ways and easements must be maintained by the owner in a manner consistent with the maintenance of the owner's remaining property. It also says the public authority, which city is Gadsden, does not cut weeds, grass, or other growth upon rights of way or city easements. And then it keeps going. All the other main maintenance is responsible of the owner and the property under which the right of way easement is located. And then it goes down and C says that if uh, property is allowed to become overgrown with tall grass or weeds, then it becomes a nuisance abatement. And, and that's one of the things. A lot of people call in and ask, uh, you know, you're supposed to cut the grass in the right of way in front of your house and keep it like you do the rest of your property. And that includes a little piece of section of grass between your curb and your sidewalk sometimes. Uh, we, we mow all the rights of way in the city of Gadsden. Uh, we do state routes and city routes. Uh, we maintain the median on uh, Albert Rains and, and Megan and, uh, and the outside. We do all the city roads. Um, we do, so far we've got three rounds. With, we have three mowers, that, or actually got five mowers, three most that we use, two uh, sidearm mowers that reach out and do behind the ditch. Uh, uh, bush hogs, side mounting bush hogs, we do side, uh, the, uh, side roads with, and then regular bush hogs. And we do all the medians on the interstate. Uh, uh, 7759, that's our interchange. We keep it up. We do right here at uh, Albert Rains and uh, 759, and we do the interchange at uh, that's 431 and 411 there. So uh, it's, we added it up before. I didn't have it quick enough for me today. It's well over 500 miles of rights away that we mow. Uh, we keep the, we're hoping to do four maybe five if we get around to it with the complete round with our sidearm slopes. Um, that's basically what we do. 
it's a it's it's a whole lot of grass and mm -hmm. uh, takes a long time to do it and like like uh, Mr. Ashley says you know you have good days and bad days when it rains and when it don't and uh, we've had a lot of rain and it's growing fast we're actually mowing today uh, a lot of places right after it rains so uh, do y'all have any other questions was that some of the stuff you was asking about I don't, I don't have questions I just have a yeah. comment okay um, <laughs> We, we talked about it upstairs, and, and we, we got to do something because we're sending a, a mixed signal to the public. At ordinance A, the public needs to cut the right of way from the sidewalk to the curb in front of their house. That's correct. They're responsible. Yet, if there was an election going on in the city right now and somebody stuck a sign out there, the city would come and take the sign up because you're in the city right of way. So you can't tell folks, you can't put something out there, but then you expect them to keep it up. So we, we, we got to do something to make that consistent. You know, I talk about consistency. So if we expect the public to keep the right of ways cut and all that, then we need to give them the right to do some of the things in that right of way they want to do, as long as it don't appease traffic and block traffic. Right, so that's one of the things it says in, that I didn't read in the ordinance, the owner of the burden property uh, continues to control the property except to the extent that such control interferes with the public use. Sometimes the signs may, you know, bother, can't see to get out, stuff like that. That's I uh, think that's where they fall in. Uh, but you know, this is all. This is the city ordinance. You know, it's, yeah. I, I understand that. That's why I'm saying we need to look at that very, very carefully because the complaint I get from people is, you know, well, I can't, you know, I put a sign out there, the city come and take it up, but they want me to cut the grass. I mean, if that's <clears throat> If that's my yard, then I should be able to do what I want to do. So what we need to do is look at that. And I know that that's yeah. none of yours, but, I mean, we've discussed that. So the council is going to look at doing that, something about that. Yeah, I, I agree that we do need to do something uh, pertaining to what type of, uh, what type of uh, control you have over that portion that we're talking about now, easement, as far as signing and other use is concerned. And we will address that. We've got... We got almost two years before you'll be putting that in the signs again. So um, whatever that is, we hope to have that resolved very soon to eliminate the confusion. But as it stands now, as it stands now, we're talking the grass cutting and the maintenance issue of your yard and your lawn and your property, and you are responsible for it to the street. Simple as that. Brian, I don't want to ask you this question. Uh, it's not grass cutting, but can you give me give us an update on where we are as far as trash pickup? Because I've had I know we've had a lot of bad weather and lead limbs are falling and debris is being cleaned out of people's backyards and things. But where are we as far as uh, picking up that, that that debris and trash? Because I'm getting a lot of calls concerning the fact that people are saying that it's been out there for two and three weeks uh, and it hadn't been picked up. Where are we there? Uh, we are behind, and you know, mostly our trash is like your garbage. You know, we're gonna get 90 gallons every day. Right. With trash, you don't know when they start cleaning up and the weather gets a little better. You know, used to nobody got outside because it was hot. And you, you didn't have that much. We get caught up pretty well. We can do it in a week. You know, sometimes as little as three days get over our area. Now that people's getting out again, it backs it up some. Uh, we're probably 10 days sometimes seven to ten days getting all the way around a route we have one guy assigned to each route each district basically and they go around and when they finish they start back and we are behind um, we're also doing more with less and uh, it's uh, not not too awful bad if, you, if we get calls we try to you know catch them up but we are behind okay. but we don't have a day you know it's trash is so hard because of the volume you don't know what the volume is going to be from house to house okay can you also can you also give us a, a, a short a briefing on what will what you will pick up and what you what they are supposed to do if they have anything other than debris out of the yard are they supposed yes. to call you or whatever give, right. give us a short synopsis of that yes sir. we do collect any construction or building material at all you do not do not that's the responsibility of the either the contractor or the property owner now. The property owner can bring a truckload, pickup truckload, to the landfill as long as they have their 
uh, ID with our driver's license to show them where they live for free. So that's one of the ways we try to do that. One of our biggest problems was construction demolition debris. So we don't take it at all. Uh, tree, brush, limbs, uh, furniture, anything like that's fine. Uh, we, 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 the ordinance says any big stuff like furniture and uh, like beds or mattresses, you need to call and tell us and we'll tell you what day to put it out there so it don't sit out there and, and become a nuisance and look bad. Uh, now the limbs and brush you put out there anytime. Uh, if a, somebody cuts the tree besides the property owner, then that's their responsibility to get it up. If we come by and we actually see a tree surging, cutting, your, we're not going to get the debris. And we're never picking up anything larger than 10 inches in diameter or three foot in length is what the ordinance says. Very good. Thank you, sir. Quick, how much of your budget is money, money-wise off the top of your head, do you devote or have set aside for state properties that we're mowing right now? That I, I, I couldn't tell you that. We have... Um, Can you get it for me because I want to sure. use it in Montgomery Thursday? We cut, we cut the probably weekly we're around the two state right of ways. It takes a little longer than that on the interchanges, but... I want money because that will impact them. That will be good. <laughs> okay. Just tell them the amount of money. I appreciate it. Uh, Brian, why, why don't you get with Brian Cox and list all of that stuff you just went okay. over, mm -hmm. and he can put that up like a notice as well. I'll do okay, it. I'll give him a, that'd be I'll good. Send him a memo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That, that that is good information because we 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 we're, we're learning that more and more of our citizens are tuning in to GITN channel 99 and seeing what's going on in the city. So as when we can get this information to our citizens, it'll certainly help them to understand, you know, the problem, the situation that we're in, and and what they're responsible for and what, what their duties and responsibilities are. Thank you. Okay. Are there any more department report, reports? If we're not, that brings us down to number 12, Citizen Request. Maddie Eubanks, Overgrown Grass. Is she here? Miss Eubanks here? She's here. If you'll come to the microphone, please, and state your name and address for the City Council. And you've got five minutes, please, ma'am. Five minutes? <laughs> Is that too long? It'll go, it'll go quick, I promise you. Yeah, but she got more than that, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I better, I better sit back then. It, it has nope. been interesting thus far. When I last spoke with Mr. Ashley, Mr. Troop, and made my decision to ask to come to the agenda this morning, to get on the agenda and come to the city meeting this morning, some of the things that we talked about they didn't have the stats that they just gave us. And Mr. Ashley says he had to do this in a hurry. Now, I see listed here uh, Maddie Eubanks' overgrown grass. When I went to the city clerk office and I spoke with, I was told the city clerk was in a meeting with someone. I spoke with the assistant. And I asked to be put on the agenda for wild grass. I'm very interested in everything that has been shared with us this morning. But the wild grass specifically that I'm here for today is called Johnson grass. Now, if you're not out of the country, you may not know what I'm talking about. But it has already been said, one picture is worth a thousand words. <laughs> And by the way, I have property in several districts. Born and reared in Edward County. Been in the city of Gaston since 48. But I want to share with you my concern of this Johnson grace. My family, my mother and father's estate, the corner of Treadwell Avenue and Cypress Street in East Gaston. And Cypress run from Springfield Avenue to 278 East. We have a man with a farm tractor that cuts the fields. He cut it this weekend. Matter of fact, he went there Sunday afternoon. He said he chose Sunday afternoon. I said, I hope you didn't cut it Sunday afternoon. He didn't cut it last week because he promised to get it last week. He said, the rain forecast says it's going to rain Monday and Tuesday, so I went out there Sunday afternoon and cut it. But I made these pictures 
When he cut the grass in April of this year, there was no Johnson grass. My dad didn't permit Johnson grass to grow in the garden and in the fields. Circulate the picture, please. <coughs> that has grown up since the tractor was there and cut in April. I have some pictures of other areas in other districts. This is a follow-up of the one you are seeing. It gives you an idea how tall it is. Once it goes to seed, the seed sprouts, and you, you've got a nuisance. I mean, when I drove up over there, and I have been sick, hospitalized in, missed a few weeks of even going by the home site. My sister and I, she lives in the area, but I had not been. What in the world? Where did this Johnson grass come from? There has never been any Johnson grass on that lot. Now, the birds scatter seeds. And God is an awesome God, but I don't believe he sold Johnson grass down the side of Cypress. <laughs> now since then, and to give you some idea of the height, did I give you one of these? Yes. Okay. The height in comparison to the street sign that this Johnson grass has grown. Now, my son keeps the ditch and the bed of the field, cut with the weed eater and the lawnmower. The man comes in and the vacant half an acre on one side of the house, the house sits on a half an acre. There's less than a half an acre near Cypress there. But he cuts from Treadwell Avenue back down the, the half an acre in depth. We keep it cut. He cuts around the street signs with his weed eater and lawnmower. Now since then, since finding this over at our area, I came out the same day to Springfield Avenue and Megan Boulevard. If the birds are sowing the grass, I mean sowing the seeds, when you get to King Street, the street sign, and a few feet back on Springfield Avenue, observe if it hasn't been cut, the thick patch of Johnson grass. I have a picture here. This is North 11th Street, a vacant lot. Johnson grass. It's been weeds, but this is Johnson grass. Now, and if you look close at this picture, you see the seeds. If this amount of seeds is permitted to go to seeds and sprout, the city of Gasson, Mr. Stovall, Mr. Ashley don't have a problem now besides what you're going to have. My question was, when I went to Mr. Troop, and I started with them, Mr. Troop and Mr. Ashley, I haven't been to Glencoe in recent years when Mr. My neighbor, Jake Bradford, and I, I have been in Glencoe when they unlocked this gate. And the city of personnel go in, I was going in too. We had other issues in District 3. But that's not why I'm here this morning. This is a corner of Braid, Street, and by the way, when I came out through there this morning, someone has taken the street Ms. Eubanks, Ms. Eubanks. Yes. Your five minutes is up. Can kind of just kind of wind it up for us a little bit here, please, ma'am. All right. You might want to see another picture of Johnson grass on the corner of Bray. When when the public works used to, used to keep that corner cut, it's a triangle. Young children, cars, low small cars. If you're coming up Abercrombie, you can't see off of Bray. If you're on Bray, you can't see on Abercrombie. Not only that, it's one of the prettiest sites, and they cut this last week. Last Thursday or Friday, you got that spot on Tuscaloosa Avenue. I had the experience last Wednesday morning going out Abercrombie Avenue. I had to stick my vehicle in the street and facing a pickup truck just a few feet away because I could not see the small pickup truck. But that corner has been cut. The city has cut it. Johnson grass is the only reason why I'm here this morning. I asked to speak about wild grass. Now, it has been interesting that these two public work officials came before me with all these stats today. Now, you say my time is up. I want to thank you. But I'm not going anywhere because I've been around for 70 some odd years. But uh, hopefully, 
that all of us together can work at this. But I am police chief. I'm concerned. This is like having vandalism. If someone had taken and sprayed my car with paint, for I know what Johnson Grass takes away from property. Now, a red bond has some chemical there called Insure that will kill this, but you can't grow anything there for years after putting that kind of chemical in there. That's why I say it's an act of vandalism. <clears throat> now, where the Johnson Grass seeds are coming from, who's distributing them, I don't know. But I pray I don't ever catch anybody putting it on my property. Thank you. Okay, Miss Eubanks, if you will, just give a Mr. Asher and Mr. Stovall and talk with them about all this right here. I think they might could help you in some way. And we appreciate you coming today, and thank you for everything you informed us about. That brings us down by remarks by the mayor and council. Mayor Gatton, would you like to go first, please? I don't have anything. Don't have anything. Okay. <coughs> Councilman Reed, would you like to go next? Yeah, I use Roundup. I shoot that Johnson grass, and it and it kills it, and then I can kind of mow it. And that's what I do. But I think the city's been doing that. Uh, the Boomers All American Barber Spa, those real nice people, and it's going to be a success because I'm going to go over there and partake. I just want to get that in. Uh, we were asked to go to North Gaston Baptist Church on Sunday for Friends Day. I knew uh, they said you had some other commitment, Mayor, and that was good. I went, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, Phil Walter did a, did a great job, a good speech. The pastor over there is David Chandler. He treated me real nice, called my name. I stood up, you know, and everybody clapped. It was really nice. It makes me feel good. But they accepted me over there, and I just had a blast with those people. I really did. Uh, we had a good meeting at Homer Entrican's house on the uh, neighborhood meeting. It was on police work in that area. We got a whole lot done. Mike Hilton went out and helped us a bunch with that. EMA got a bunch of information there. So everything turned out great. There. That's all I have. Councilman Stewart. Um, I would like to invite everybody to an event that's going to happen at the Pittman Theater this Friday night. Uh, you know, we talked about trying to steer our young people into making good decisions and, and wise decisions and no bad decisions as, as they come up. And this young man is starting a ministry uh, to deal with that. And, and uh, it, I think it'd be very worthwhile for anybody that, uh, to come out and hear his message. That's the Pittman Theater this coming Friday night. Doors open at 6 and the program will start at 6.30. It's a free event. Uh, and I think the band has a real good message that uh, would benefit all of us. So invite you out. That's all I have. Councilman Harris. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, yesterday we uh, had the opportunity to go to Hand the Chapel uh, AME Church. Yeah. Yes, Sunday, I'm sorry. <laughs> Two days ago. Sunday we had the opportunity to go to Hand the Chapel for community leaders a get together. And it was very informative. Uh, Councilman Williams, myself, and the police chief were there from the city. And we just, uh, it was a very informal gathering. Uh, we, we, we discussed some issues, you know, that, uh, that, that uh, some of the parishioners there had a concern about. And then we uh, let them give us some things that they had a concern about. So it was very, it was very informative. I, 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 the pastor there, uh, Reverend Robinson ha has assured us that she will continue this process of, com of gathering community leaders together so that we can all discuss things that are that are of a concern to all of us as a community. So look, I look forward to her continuing those those meetings and and, and for us to have good times and and participation from 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 all of our community leaders, all community leaders, elected and otherwise. Um, we have uh, an opportunity on Mondays, this coming Monday again, to go to the water wall for jazz at the waterfall at the water wall uh, with DJ Buster. So uh, it's eleven to one. We come down and listen to jazz, you know, and, and, and bring your lunch. It's the the water wall is between the Pittman Theater and the Senior Activity Building. And it's a very, very good atmosphere. We, we listen to jazz, you know, we eat our lunch. 
John Cannon had a meeting down there while we were eating lunch uh, last week. So it's a, it's a it's a good event. So I encourage you to come out and 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 and, and relax to some beautiful jazz. Uh, we will be having our district meeting in District One on Monday. Uh, that will be Monday, August the twentieth, at six p.m. at the East Gadsden Recreation Center. I encourage all residents of District One and anyone in the city of Gadsden who's interested in knowing uh, what we're doing or what's going on in the city to please be there in attendance. We will have Brian Harbison as our guest, who is the building department uh, supervisor. But Brian will be there to answer questions, to give you insight on to, as to what's happening as far as building uh, in, in the city of Gadsden is concerned. Please come out and, in, and, and join us. Uh, you know, we, we're, politics is uh, you know is is a, is, is a strange is a strange phenomenon. You know, uh, we've been for the past two years that I've been affiliated with the with the city council here. We've been going to National League of City uh, uh, functions. We've gone to Alabama League of Municip Municipalities functions, and everything that we uh, gather from all of those functions is that the mandates will be made in Washington D.C. And in Montgomery, Alabama, without there being any funding for those mandates. Now, your local officials here, the ones you see here in front of you, and your county commissioners, are going to be the ones who are going to have to make decisions, who are going to have to uh, come up with funding to continue the services that we are intent on giving or providing for you. So you know, it, it, it's a tough thing. Uh, you know, we, we need help from our legislature. Uh, you, every time you get the opportunity, would you please uh, call your legislators and let them know where you stand, what needs to be done, how we can continue to improve our situation here in Gadsden, Alabama. Uh, whatever happens in Montgomery, Mobile, you know, Birmingham, you know, that's, that, that's a little concern to me. What happens here in Gadsden is my concern. And we need those legislators on our side to help us to do what we need to do. Because it's, it's, it's just like water. Water runs downhill. And here we are trying to make, 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 uh, make do with what we have uh, without any tax increases. <laughs> so bear with us, you know. Uh, we're going to do the best we can. We're going to be your servants. And we're going to do the best we can with what we've been uh, charged to do. Thank you. Councilman Williams. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just a couple quick things again. I do want to thank uh, North Gaston Baptist Church for inviting us out. Um, had a, I had a com conflicting uh, event that didn't allow me to make theirs, but uh, but do want to again thank them for that. Uh, thank Pastor Chandler for that um, that invite. Uh, also want to thank uh, Pastor Robinson for uh, the event at Handy Chapel. Very, very interesting and very meaningful dialogue with the folks there. Uh, at Handy Chapel. One of, one of the things that was raised at ha Handy Chapel was something that uh, I think you guys know is near, to, near and dear to me. Um, and uh, I won't call him by name, but the individual that uh, raised that uh, concern is, is here today. Uh, and it's the uh, prospect of afternoon and evening meetings. Um, so, um, you know, the, the, the response that I gave to that is, is quite simple, and I won't spend too much time here, but, um, you know, we historically have uh, met in the morning. Uh, I think the city of Gaston is one of uh, a couple cities that still meet in the mornings. Um, and I think as we continue down that path, which is fine, I mean, I think if we continue down that path, we'll continue to see an absence of youth in our political pipeline. Uh, so I think it's important for us to be open to the idea of at least one, maybe two of our monthly uh, meetings. Uh, or I'm sorry, of our weekly meetings being conducted in the afternoons or evenings to allow working people, both old and young, to be quite honest, but working people uh, to participate in the political process. Um, and, uh, and again, you know, that, that's open for debate, but I think it's important for us to consider that because, um, I, I, you know, I've been a, a working uh, adult most of the time that I've been involved in the political process, and it's very difficult. Um, to uh, as a as a working individual to participate in this process, and uh, and we miss out on a, on a huge uh, brain trust uh, and and a lot of technical skills by not including working individuals in our political process. So again, let's be open to that, and uh, and I hope that generates some discussion down the road. Um, 
The last thing is um, I had the opportunity to speak at uh, the uh, uh, at the Atala Summer Enrichment uh, Banquet on Saturday, and that was it was just good to be able to go back to Atala and see some old faces. I uh, got a chance to spend some um, considerable time with State uh, Senator Larry Means, and it was just good to see him there. Um, but um, and we talked a whole lot about. Um, math and science and the need for us to really drive that in our education system. So um, again, I do want to make this very brief point. If, if you are, if you have in, any influence over a young person and their, their career choices in the near future, uh, encourage them uh, to head down the path of math and science, some level of career in math and science because that is the economy of tomorrow. Um, much of what we see now in the way of job creation, there are jobs out there that are being created. But if you just have a degree in anything, uh, you're not going to be qualified for those jobs that are out there. So again, that's just a, a, a point that I wanted to make in terms of driving our children to really get involved. Uh, the state of Alabama is performing very poorly. We're 40, 45th and 47th in a number of indexes that rate uh, educational performance. While we do have a very solid career tech um, uh, model in the state of Alabama, uh, we perform very poorly as it relates to math and science indexes. So again, let, let, that's something we should keep on our radar as we are guiding our young people. Thank you. Councilman Avery. Yes, I want to thank Mike for this list and this information. I'm, I know they're in our district now, so I appreciate that. Because maybe the calls will stop now on the grass cutting that he's over there. But I was looking at this list, and there's 41 um, items listed on the front page, first page. Out of the 41 items, uh, there's only six that are not state of Alabama listed or city of Gaston. I mean, so that tells you where the problem is. So hopefully we can get something pushed through on the state level so we can start uh, purchasing some of this property and getting it back in hands of the property, I mean, to individuals so they can get back on the tax road. That's the other thing, too. If it says the state of Alabama, they ain't paying taxes on it. So uh, we're losing money there. So we need to do a better job, like I said, have a fire sale and uh, sell some of this property if we can get our hands on it. Two quick announcements. Uh, uh, due to the fact that we're going over to the football game this Thursday night, um, and by the way, there's still a few seats left on the bus if anybody still want to go to the uh, Falcons and Cincinnati Bengals football game. Um, that's this Thursday night. It's forty-five dollars. Um, so we'll be going over on on Thursday. Uh, due to that fact, my district meeting will be Saturday morning at ten a.m. at the Carver Community Center. Uh, and so we're asking everybody to to please come out Saturday morning at ten, and we will see you there. All right. I just want to remind everyone that this is the third Saturday. In August, we do, will be having music on Megan at the gazebo. Starts at 6, ends at 10. We've got, I think, three bands lined up. As usual, it will be free food there. And Labor Day, uh, I think it's like the 2nd of September, if I'm not mistaken, or the 3rd, we'll have our big singing and have a little talk about Labor Day down there. And there'll be some old cars and some motorcycles down there. Plenty of music. I think that's going to start about 3 o'clock that day. And also to remind everyone that in South Gadsden, from airport down to Central, we're going to start a Save Our Neighborhood meeting. It'll be August the 21st, which will be next Tuesday night at 5.30 at Banks Park. And the chief will be there and Ms. Carter will be there to explain to you how we can start our Save Our Neighborhood meeting. And on that note, if I have a motion to adjourn. So no. No. I have another thing I forgot about, Mr. President. Uh, school school will be starting next week. That's right. And uh, you know we have gone. Now, this past weekend, there were three or four back to school events. Uh, I know one was at uh, Quality of Life had one at Antioch, uh, where they had a great turnout, and another one was at New Liberty Tabernacle uh, on Saturday also, where the kids are, are, are there. And whenever the kids are gathered like that, you know, it, go attend these uh, gatherings so that those uh, of you who, who, who are interested can help guide and lead our youngsters, you know, as we get ready to, 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 to start another school year. Uh, 
There will be several more uh, this weekend, uh, and then, of course, there will be several other events community-wide that are scheduled for the next three or four weeks. But I encourage you to go out and participate, uh, grandmothers, grandfathers, aunt, uncles, you know, uh, participate to the degree that you can. And in the school zones, chief, when they start up again, I want, we would love a police a policeman there uh, in the school zones in the afternoons, in the mornings, especially those areas where we have a high incidence of speeding through those school zones. We want some tickets written in the school zones where people just completely uh, do not even care that the kids are tr trying to cross the street. So uh, please uh, don't have the officers, do not be afraid to write tickets uh, and necessarily take people on on up to the county up there since uh, until ICE uh, decides that they're going to pull the contract. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mayor, <clears throat> I had a question about mosquito spray, and Jeremy, you may know this. The way I understand it, uh, we don't spray regular routes anymore. Is that correct? And if somebody has a problem and calls, then we go out and spray the air, but we don't have regular routes anymore. That's some more of the bureaucratic hand downs. <laughs> I didn't see the chief after the meeting. I've got a person here who needs to talk to you. Okay. Do I have a second motion? We adjourn. So moved. We adjourn. <laughs>